The Black Panther Party interceded in places where the U.S. government was seemingly absent, like its nationwide screening program for sickle cell disease. It was a first. The government was not prioritizing sickle cell anemia for the same reason that Jackie Robinson had to be the first baseball, black baseball player in 1948, for the same reason that the black troops were segregated during World War II. There was racism in this country. Sickle cell anemia was a disease that affected uh, mostly black folks. Sickle cell is the single most common genetic disease in the United States, and the vast majority of patients are African American. It's painful and deadly, and in 1970, the country only allocated less than $100,000 in funding. We spent $7.8 million on muscular dystrophy, $1.6 million on cystic fibrosis, $8 million to get a man on the moon. And obviously, sickle cell anemia was not a priority. Then an intriguing thing happened in 1972. John Lennon invited Black Panther members and collaborators to appear on one of the most popular talk shows of the day, The Mike Douglas Show. And they seized the platform to address the problem of sickle cell disease. We've tested 30,000 people in sickle cell for sickle cell anemia. I think we've tested more than anybody in the country. And just like that, sickle cell became part of the national conversation. The Panthers used their medical infrastructure to run tests for sickle cell in cities all over the country. So it is objectively true that one of the defining public health initiatives of the early 1970s wasn't launched by the U.S. government, but by an organized group of socialist advocates. The initiative gained so much momentum that President Nixon signed legislation to aid research on finding a cure for the disease. By this point, the Black Panthers had become a major cultural force operating on the international stage. Their